And the title of this message is In the Lion's Den. Our scripture reading, Daniel 6, and I'm only going to read from uh, verse 16 to 23, but I want, I want to encourage you to read the whole chapter. So remember that uh, a few weeks ago, we, the, the title of the message was the, the, the writing is on the wall. You remember that? Where uh, the king then got Daniel to interpret what was written on the wall. And I said to you that the writing is on the wall for South Africa. The writing is on the wall for the world, this world. And I'm talking about judgment. Judgment is coming. It is about to come for each and every person. And you know what? This judgment and, and the warning of this judgment, the writing is on the wall, is for us. You know, it's because God loves us. It is just to give somebody another chance. But things cannot continue in this country and in the world as it is. And I know that God is going to uh, remember the prophetic word. God said he will not bless a mess. God cannot bless a mess. He's going to clean up. And then the glory of God will come to South Africa. And this country will stand out, you know, as a lighthouse in the world. It is coming. Isn't that awesome? Last week I spoke to you about, you know, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego who went through the fire. And we know that, you know, a lot of times in the days that we're living, uh, you know, we are going through fire. But we saw that there was a fourth man with him in the fire, and that was Jesus Christ. You know, and therefore in Isaiah, Jesus said, God said that if you go through the waters and the rivers and the fire, that, you know, he will take you through, he will be with you. So this, uh, today I want to talk to you about the lion's den and Daniel in the lion's den. It's one thing to hear the roar of danger off in the distance or far in the future. It's one thing to make promises to God in a safe and calm here and now. But what if that roar suddenly erupted in your face right now? What if your faith was tested by the fiery gaze of a lion? Would you be able to stay committed? Well, I'd like to tell you about a man who stood very much alone in a time of widespread corruption. A man who was tested by the roar of danger up close. His amazing story will inspire and encourage you. So let us read Daniel 6, verse 16 to 23. We're going to read out of the New International Version. So the king gave the order and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you. Continually rescue you. You see, remember what happened here is that, you know, the other uh, government uh, agents, they actually set a trap for Daniel, you remember. So I think they must have been corrupt, they must have done things wrong and they didn't want Daniel, you know, because he was upright, he, he did everything right, he had a spirit of excellence, the Bible tells us. You know, so the, the, the king uh, didn't actually want to harm Daniel, but he had no choice because, you know, they actually got him into making this decree. So he had no choice then to throw Daniel in the lion's den. So a stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own secret ring and with the rings of the nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to, this, uh, to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn the king got up and he hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? Now listen to his words. Listen to his words. Let me just highlight this. As your God whom you serve continually. Are you serving God continually? Been able to rescue from the lions. Verse 21, Daniel answered, My king, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel 
and he shut the lion, uh, the mouth of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done anything wrong before you, your majesty. <coughs> the king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the lion's den. And when Daniel was lifted from the dead, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. So he was lifted out of the dead. Our text verse, Daniel 6.22 My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight and I have not wronged you, your majesty. So that is the narrative, the story of Daniel in the lion's den, and all of us know that. So the key to answered prayer is to know and to do the will of God, and in doing so, to honor God. And it is hard for us to pray, Thy will be done, you know. The major sin of, human, of the human heart is pride. You know, we want our will be done. We want it our way. And we need to submit unto God. We need to do it this way. That is why He gave His word to us. It is to give us His principles, His guidelines. And His principles will never change. In marriage, the husband is not right, the wife is not right. In a family, the children are not right, the parents are not right. You know, uh, in this country, uh, a black man is not right, the white man is not right. In every situation, God is right and He's got the principles that He gave us. And when we submit unto God and apply His principles, wherever we are, you know, then we will be blessed and we will stand in unity. The major sin of, human, of the human heart, I say, is pride. My will, not your will. All sin is just simply saying, I will disobey the will of God. Jesus came into this world to do the will of the Father. Are you willing to do the same, my beloved? Are you willing to do the same? You know, in the last days that we live, we find ourselves as children of God in difficult situations more and more every day, isn't it? More and more every day. Do you find yourself in the lion's den perhaps? You know, it's not the physical lion's den, but we find ourselves in lion's den. Regarding your life and your circumstances, your situation. The lion's den represents a place of trial, of pain, sickness, opposition, and attack. You know, and a lot of us finds us in the lion's den then, in that situation when there's no way out. We don't know what's the answers. We've got no answers. There's nothing that we can do ourselves, you know. So let us have a look what we can learn out of Daniel chapter 6, when Daniel was in the lion's den. So we need to, first of all, realize the reality of the lion's den. We need to realize and to know the reality of that. And I want to remind you of a scripture in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, and I'm going to read out of Amplified, where Peter said, Be sober, well balanced, and self disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. So can you see that the devil is like a lion, walking around to see whether he can destroy you and hurt you? Alright? So, I want to do something this morning. And it's important, it's a, it's a manifestation. Just look at the one next to you or the back of you or whatever and say good morning. Good morning. How are you? How are you? Now tell him uh, I'm fine, thank you. 
But I tell him or her, be sober. Well balanced. Self-disciplined. Be alert. And cautious. At all times. Right? So that is a warning that Peter gave us. Why? Because the devil is, you know, he's walking around, he prowls around like a roaring lion and he's looking to see who he can devour. So we see that Daniel was in real danger and in a life-threatening situation in the lion's den. We as born-again believers must realize today that we are also in real danger and in a life-threatening situation. In order to fulfill your God-given purpose on this earth, you need to realize your ability to be successful in life has more to do with your choices in life than your circumstances. Listen to this. Your ability to be successful in life has got more to do with your choices that you make on a daily basis, big and small, than your circumstances. So, let us look at some of the choices that Daniel made before, when and after he found himself in this situation in the lion's den. And let us do the same. He made certain choices. So I want to highlight three choices that he made. There, there's more, but I want to highlight these three. So the first one is, he choose God. Daniel choose God, and we must choose God as well. And you can tell me, you can say to me, but I chose God. You know, I'm a born again believer. Yes, that's good. Praise God. But there's more to it. You must choose God on a daily basis. Daniel chose God. He lived a lifestyle. You see, there's the key word. The lifestyle where he put God first at all times. I mean, even the king said to him, the God that you continually serve. You remember that in our scripture? He put God first. He continually served God. So many times we choose to the comfort of this world and what it offers. You know, we choose the easy way out. We choose all these uh, instant uh, solutions of this world. We are living in the last days, people. We choose to just go with the flow. Whatever the world offers us is acceptable and we must be careful not to bow the knee to this world and the devil. We read in Romans 12, verse 1 to 2, and I'm going to read this well-known scripture out of the message to you. Just look at it. Just listen to it. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become, listen to this, don't become so well adjusted to your culture, so well adjusted to this world's way of doing things. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. Focus on God. Focus on His Word. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you and develops well-formed maturity in you. That, I mean, that makes a statement. That tells it all. That says it all, isn't it? Your lifestyle. So why do you want to fit into this world? Tell me. Why do you want to fit into this world when God created you to stand out? To fulfill your purpose that only you can fulfill. People, it is time for the children of God to stand up and to stand out and to make a statement 
and to let the love of God flow and to put your faith into action because faith without works is dead. But pastor, you don't know my circumstances and my situation. You don't understand. I was born on the wrong side, the wrong side of, of town or, or the, the railway line or, you know, the, the Onderdorp and all that kind of stuff. You don't know where I come from. You don't know my circumstances. You don't know this, you don't know this. I don't want to be part of a pity party. I can have my own pity party as well. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. You know? And if that is the case, then what are you going to do about it as a child of God? You've got a choice. Daniel was in a very bad situation. Just look at these circumstances. He was in a foreign country under the rule of a foreign king and most probably surrounded by corrupt government officials who wanted to get rid of him because he did, want, did not want to bow down the knee and be corrupt with them. Just look at these circumstances. And he was taken out of his country as a teenager. He was actually still very young. He was a child. He was facing death if he continued to serve God. So for over 70 years, I mean Daniel was already at that stage we know about 80 years old. So for over 70 years in a foreign land, he still prayed three times a day in the direction of Jerusalem. In the direction of the city of, of God. Why did he do it? Well, it shows us that he was focused. He was focused on God. You know, he put his focus on God. He diligently prayed. He continually prayed. He was still focused on God. He refused to compromise. He chose character over comfort. He chose character over comfort. Are you choosing character over comfort? He chose God. That is the first decision or choice that he made. The second choice, he chose obedience. He chose obedience. Daniel made the choice to obey God and not what the world expected from him. We read in John 14 verse 15 where Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, obey my word. Do you really love God? Do you obey His word? Do you choose obedience? Daniel loved God. He chose obedience. He made a choice to obey the word of God. Daniel chose that discipline of God's word. Who of you know that discipline is involved in the word of God? We are disciples of Jesus Christ. It means that we are disciplined followers obeying his word. Discipline is the systematic exercise to obedience. Let me repeat it. The systematic exercise to the obedience. Obedience of what? In our case, the obedience of God's word. That is discipline. We are serving a God of discipline, a God of order. Who of you know that God is a God of order? How can we operate in confusion and disorder? How do you feel when your life is total, you know, in total confusion and disorder? And you know, you don't know where to go to, where to touch, what to do. And uh, you know, there's no order and discipline in your life. You know, you don't feel good. Am I right? We are serving a God of discipline and order, not of confusion and disorder. Daniel chose discipline over disorder. He did what God expected him to do and he refused to do what the world around him expected him to do. So when you are confused and your life is disorderly, 
you need discipline and order in order to come into the will of God. It's got to do with your lifestyle. Get up early in the morning every day at the same time. Have your quiet time. Do this at that time, do that at that time, go to bed that time. See that you, you, your house is neat and tidy and in place and everything that you do is planned and orderly set out for the day, for the week, for the month and you will see the difference that it's going to make in your life. We are serving a God of order and of discipline. Otherwise, you will be confused. You will live in disorder and that is not the will of God. You see, when you are confused and you live a disorderly life, it means that your life will be in a mess. Discipline stops you to react emotionally and it will help you to respond in line with the Word of God, out of the love of God and out of faith. If your life is in disorder, your emotions will be in roller coaster mode and you will not be able to stand in faith. It will help you to become a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Daniel chose to obey God and his word. Daniel chose discipline above or over disorder. Are you choosing discipline over disorder? The third choice that Jan Daniel made, he choose love. He choose love. Now to choose love means to choose the love of God, but it also means to put that love into action. He choose love. Daniel made the choice to love God unconditionally and to put that in action. We read in 1 John 4 verse 18, such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment and this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. Only God has perfect love, but that love is shared abroad in your hearts by the Holy Spirit. The agape or the agape love of God. The unconditional love of God. So choose to love God because He first loved you. So when you love God, you will trust Him. People, this is very important to understand this. When you love God, the love of God is within you. That is when you will trust God. Daniel did not trust the king to spare his life. Although he knew that the king was, you know, didn't actually want to kill him. Daniel did not trust the king to spare his life. He trusted God to save him. Daniel chose peace over panic. It's a choice. It's a choice. Because of the love of God, he was at peace and he trusted God. Daniel did not know what was waiting for him in the lion's den. However, he knew that God be with him in the lion's den. He made the decision to put his trust in God and he rested in his peace. Daniel purposed in his heart to honor God regardless of whether he will survive or not. He made a choice to focus on God and not his adversaries. He knew the truth. Choosing God means choosing love because God is love. Because of the love of God inside of him, he was able to choose rest over revenge. Rest over revenge. Nowhere in the text do you read of Daniel hating his enemy, hating the king, hating those people. Nowhere. Or walking around with unforgiveness in his heart. No. Because of the love of God, he was able to focus on God and please God alone. You see the moment that you're out, out of unforgiveness or hatred or whatever, to, on, on the revenge, you're not focused on God. You focus on, on your enemies and all the people around you. 
So choose the same that that is what but Daniel chose. So we need to choose the love of God. We need to choose peace over panic first of all. And we need to choose rest. I'm talking about the rest of God over revenge. Alright. Those are the three choices that Daniel made. So, once again, let's look at what the world will do when you make these choices. We need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. That is what Peter said to us. You know, in that scripture that we read. We must be ready. We must be prepared. We must know what the world will do as well. So, we see that when you choose God, obedience, love, and you honor God and God alone, the world and the enemy does not like it at all. Then you become a real threat to the devil and his demonic forces, especially in these days, the last days that we live, because the devil knows that his time is running out. So what is it that the devil will do once again in our modern times? Well, once again, let us learn from Daniel. The devil will try to stop the influence of the children of God. You know? And it is, it's actually quite amazing that, you know, uh, that the devil in these modern days come with the same strategy that he had with Daniel. People listen to me. You know, the book of Daniel is so applicable on what we are experiencing today. He will use the same strategy. He will use the same strategy than what he tried with Daniel. In a way, you know, there are a lot of similarities between what happened back then and what is happening today. Especially in South Africa, but also the rest of the world. So, as I said, you know, the devil will try to stop the influence of God's people in our country, in our communities, and our societies. So do not look at the men who oppressed Daniel, but the strategy of the devil behind them. So people always remember what you see physically manifesting in front of you. There is a force behind it. You know, today, the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist is at work. The new world order and the big reset and all that kind of stuff. They are instruments in the hands of the devil and they are at work behind the scenes. Driven by this force, the spiritual force that we cannot see, the devil, it's a force behind. And it manifests everywhere around the world through people and what they do. It was exactly the same with Daniel. The moment when a child of God walks uprightly, they become dangerous to the enemy. So let us look at how the devil will do it. You know, he will use mainly two strategies. And under those strategies, a lot of things is, but let us focus on these two main strategies so that you can understand. The first strategy that you will use is distraction. Distraction. The devil will try to distract you. He will try to get you involved in this world, in this world way of doing things. You know. He will try to keep you busy when he cannot draw you into the world, distract you. He will try to, to keep you busy, sometimes with the things of God, even, so that you can get, they cannot get to the God of the things, your personal relationship with God. And you will become ineffective. Daniel was involved in the governance of the kingdom of the king, and it was not possible for the devil to distract him. He was focused, you know. He was focused on God and he operated in excellence. Daniel excelled and achieved the position of administrator among the political ranks and thereby had made many government officials angry with him 
And in their jealousy, they set out to find a way to remove him from his office of uh, prominent authority. And that is exactly what we see around us, you know, in businesses, in politics, you know, just look at what is happening in our country. Exactly the same thing. Why? So that people can continue with what they are doing, their own will and their corruption. That's why. So, if that does not work, you know, the devil will come along with temptation. And for some, that is enough to derail them, to totally distract them. If they succumb, they will waste energy struggling with guilt, trying to get back in, uh, online again or into line. That blocks them from truly experiencing God in their daily life. They will be sidetracked all the time. All right. So if that does not work, and together with that even, you know, you will, you will see the second strategy, and that is violation. With three of them. Let me explain. So when the distraction does not work the way that the devil wants to work it, the devil will come with his second strategy. He will try a different approach. What he then often does is to structure new law to put the children of God outside civil obedience. Then you become the violator as a child of God. And that is exactly what he did with Daniel. We see in Daniel chapter 6 that he was outlawing prayer. So he said that, you know, if you pray to anybody else, you will be, you're a, you're a violator. Today we see again many laws trying to force believers to become violators again. In South Africa and around the world, for instance, we have legalization of homosexuality. And once again, people, I'm not talking against the person. God loves the person. We don't hate them. God loves them. Please keep it in context. Also legalization of abortion, laws against corporal punishment of children by parents. South African government has been passing law upon law, defying the word of God, making Christians and born again believers violators. A number of pastors and Christians were already prosecuted for their faith in the word of God regarding these issues. So the effort of the enemy is to redraw the lines of the law to move us as born again believers outside of it, making the child of God a violator of that law. And it's an old strategy for which Daniel faced the lines then. The same is happening today. So let, let's see what God will do. And by this I want to encourage you. We must remember that God is at all times in control of earthly governments. You see the whole book of Daniel. We see all the time everything that happened uh, with the Babylonian uh, people and the Mede and, and Persian people. God is in control. The same today. You know, so the, the, the Antichrist wants a one world government, one world order, but God is in control. God is in control of earthly governments and empires using their actions to further his own plan and in the end bringing his world into fulfillment. You know, our sovereign God controls events in this world, judging and protecting individuals as well as world governments and countries. That is the God that we serve. God is sovereign, is superior, and able to save those who are faithful to Him. Are you faithful to God? And we know that judgment is coming to South Africa. The writing is on the wall. 
and it is people as well as the rest of the world, it will be the same. We read what happened to those people who actually tried to judge Daniel, to try to put him in a bad spot. Let me read to you Daniel 6 verse 24. Listen to this. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. Listen to this. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Judgment is coming to South Africa. God is still giving people a chance. For how long? I don't know. We don't know. The writing is on the wall. The seed, God said to me, God is not mine. Whatever you sow, you shall reap. The seed that politicians, people, church leaders, churches, individuals put in the ground, those will be the seed that God will use to judge them. After Daniel was lifted out of the lion's den, the king ordered that those who falsely accused Daniel be thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and their children. That was according to the Median and Persian laws. The lions crushed their bones before they actually hit the ground. This just shows the real danger that Daniel was in. And we need to take note that we are also in real danger. And that only God can help us. You know, these were not satisfied, lazy lions. When Daniel hit the ground, you know, they just looked at him and smile. They were ravenous beasts, but God had shut their mouths. He protected Daniel. It was truly a miracle that Daniel survived. You can see the hand of God in this. And now it was time for God's judgment. Let us just look at our text verse again. And this is what Daniel said to the king in Daniel 6 verse 22. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight and I have not wronged you, your majesty. Daniel did not start to pray for the first time when he was thrown into the lion's den. You know, it would have been too late. What we see here is that Daniel was separated unto God. He refused to compromise. He was faithful. When we do the same, and we face the lion's den in our lives, God will, will, He will display His power on our behalf. Listen, let me say this again. And if it's not revelation to you yet, let it become revelation. Open your spirit today and receive this. God said He will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus said He will be with us till the end of the age. It is time for the church to stand up. We cannot play church anymore. God will display His power on our behalf and the world will see it. You know, God said in a prophetic word in the beginning of this year that He's going to do something that you will not believe when it is told to you. He will do a great thing in His coming. But the question is, are we ready? Oh yes. Then, of course, what's also very important to me, we read in Daniel 6 verse 10 that Daniel gave thanks to God. We read it there, you can read it. He was a man with a thankful heart. Listen to me, people, there cannot be a hardened heart and a thankful heart in the same person because then you will walk around 
and you will be in a pity party, you will, you will be unthankful, you will be uh, unfor with an unforgiving heart when you walk around and all that kind of stuff. And you cannot connect to God. Daniel was a thankful man. Thankfulness put you in position for God's further blessings in your life. He was a praying man who was entrusted, who entrusted his whole life to God. Will you do the same, beloved? We read in Daniel 6 verse 23 that Daniel was lifted out of the lion's den, remember? So it means that the way out of the lion's den was upwards. He was lifted. You know, maybe they, they gave him a rope or something and he was lifted. We don't know how exactly, exactly, but we know the Bible tells us he was lifted out of the lion's den. And people, we need to realize today, we need to realize that there is no other way out. We need to stop making our own plans, trying to get the door to go out our own way. We cannot make our own plans anymore. The only way out of the lion's den is upwards towards God. If you don't serve God, if you're not born again, it's the only way to life, to eternal life, is upwards towards God. When we are serving God and we're in the lion's den, we need to reach out, we need to, to, to stretch out to God. And he will lift us out of these circumstances and situations. He will lift us out of the lion's den. <coughs> Sorry. So will you please stretch out your hands and reach out to him. He's able to lift you out of the lion's den. But you must make that decision. You must make the choice on a daily basis. Oh.